Welcome back to the Drew and Crew Podcast. I'm here with special guests John Iorio and Noel Iorio. How are you guys? Good. How are you doing? Great. Doing great. So before we get into anything, um, uh, how are you guys? Uh, the last time we saw you was right after Thanksgiving, I believe, right? We both, we all, all four of us went on to um, uh, Coronado, is it called Coronado Springs? Yep. For, um, yeah, so for Coronado a... Yeah, we went on a uh, Disney trip together, and that was a blast. And also, Emily Sadler's here, too, my girlfriend, too. I should I should have announced her, too, so she doesn't beat me tonight. So she doesn't beat me tonight. But uh, before we get into anything, how are you guys doing? Uh, what have you been up to since we've seen you last? Uh, since last time, we haven't really been doing much. Um, we did have the holidays. We just stood home because of COVID and everything like that. Uh, we are going back to Disney, uh, this weekend, actually. Um, oh, so we've been, yeah, <laughs> so we've been planning for that. Uh, I was actually supposed to have surgery last week. Um, but that got pushed due to COVID. So that's why we just decided to go to Disney because I was already supposed to be off this weekend. I mean, uh, yeah, I was already supposed to be off this weekend. Um, so yeah, so that's really how it's going. Uh, COVID's really uh, dying for uh, yeah for pretty much anything we want to do. So we've just been uh, hanging out at the house. Uh, I actually joined Orange Fitness this week. What? So, Orange, Orange Theory. Fitness. Orange Theory Fitness. I love Orange Theory. I actually just had a class tonight. Oh really? Yeah. I did one this morning, and I did one Monday. It was like. I've never done it before and I feel like there's weights attached to like my thighs and stairs are horrible for me right now but besides that I really like it the class today was a monster wasn't it yeah oh my gosh yeah <laughs> I was dying <laughs> yeah but I like it I know it's it's one of my favorite like it's just a great one hour like workout you it's a total body workout and they hit every single point, which I really like about it. Yeah. And I like how you can just like mindlessly be working out and like, they'll tell you when to switch or when to like increase the incline on a treadmill and all that good stuff. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. It's good. Oh, I'm so happy. Yay. <laughs> um, before we get into anything, John, uh, what, what were you supposed to have surgery on, if you don't mind uh, talking uh, about it? So uh, I have acid reflux, um, and I have a hyaluronic hernia. Um, gotcha. I'm not really sure what caused the hyaluronic hernia, uh, but I have a lot of problems, like, eating anymore. Um, so they're supposed to fix that. So it was actually a pretty serious uh, surgery. I was supposed to stay overnight and everything. Um, but, uh, yeah, they said... Uh, Einstein said there's too many uh, COVID beds and they were taking up the uh, surgical wing. So uh, they literally just pushed it back indefinitely and uh, they really don't have a timeline, I guess. Yeah, because I know you kind of had the same surgery we had with the slap tear with the labrum. Yes, um, I actually had a arm, Yeah, your arm's pretty much 100% from that again though, right? Uh, I wouldn't say that. Uh, after that surgery, uh, I, I still have trouble sleeping on my arm. Um, I'm the same way. Was it Dr. Amen? Did you have the same Dr. Yeah, Amen? Uh, yeah, Dr. Amen also did mine. Um, mm -hmm. He did it twice. Uh, the first time uh, went well, went to physical therapy. Uh, I think the first day the physical therapist, like, really tried to push me hard on these, uh, on weights. And, uh, I believe at that point I ended up, uh, one of the, uh, the screws, uh, it ended came up, loose yeah, or came out. yeah, it came out in the shoulder. So it really wasn't healed. Yeah. Uh, this guy had him holding the barbells like over his head. Yeah. Literally this like, is like a couple days back. Yeah, yeah. Of physical yeah. therapy. That's um, crazy. So think, yeah. So I think that's what caused the screw to come out. So he went back in there just to make sure everything was okay. And then that's when he realized uh, the screw was pretty much not where it should have been. So that's where I had the second surgery. But uh, yeah, I still have problems sleeping at night uh, on it. But 
yeah, yeah. That's rough. and that seems like the physical therapist kind of messed it up because um i remember my first time i went to physical therapy for the same surgery you had they didn't even make me uh touch weights they were like we're gonna do like really? uh, an intensive massage and they were just kind of like push kind of like pushing my arm in certain spots like making it really uncomfortable but they were telling me like not do weights until like maybe like halfway through the first month so that, yeah that's that, that, yeah, that, that for you that, yeah that's why i thought um i think the reason why is like the physical therapist um he had like a uh what are they called a, like a student like a student helper yeah one of yeah, those like, almost like an intern almost yeah yeah like an intern yeah. so like he put me him in charge of me uh and i think that's probably where it went downhill from there um yeah I would say it wasn't like horrible pain where like I realized like it came out right away. Um, it just was starting to hurt more and more every time I put my arm over my shoulder. Yeah. I meant my arm over my head. Yeah. I kind of want to get into that real quick because I know this is going to be mostly, and that's why I wanted to have uh, both you, John, and Noel on it because we're huge Disney people. But uh, I just wanted to touch base a little bit on Dodgeball just because that's practically mostly our fan base right now. But, uh, John, I just wanted to pick your brain for, like, five minutes with um, winning UDC. Uh, it was such a huge thing to do in 2015, probably one of the highlights of my career. But uh, I never really got to talk to you much about that. So I just kind of wanted to see, like, because if, if people go back and watch our videos, it's hilarious to, like, <laughs> pan over and, the like, they'll do, like, uh, like almost like a panoramic view and everybody's like so intense and then they'll show your face and you're kind of like you're like it looks like you're like oh thinking my. about like what you're going to do later in the day <laughs> it's hilarious but I love it so I just kind of want to like pick your brain real quick to be like uh, what were you going through during the, that process and and when once we won the championship like how you felt and stuff like that yeah I, I guess honestly I when we won it I don't think it really hit me like I didn't even know what to do with myself really uh, at the time, I was very, very calm. Um, I know you guys were very, very excited. Uh, but you guys also uh, tried a couple years longer than I did since you guys started with, uh, who was it, BAM? You guys started? Yeah, with BAM, and that's a yeah. shout out to, like, Mike Caterino, Mike Oliveira, um, uh, and then um, Derek Cutter, too, was on the team as well. And oh, yes. um, you guys started a couple of years before uh, I did with UDC. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, it just, I didn't say, I, I really did not take it in until we, until later that night. I'm pretty sure uh, we, since that was the year that we actually, no, that was the, the year after we rented the house. But yeah, the year before, um, I'm not sure where we even stayed, but uh, I know we ended up partying uh pretty hard that night um so i pretty much that's when i probably took it in and uh really was like very excited and realized like what we actually did but up till this day i talk about it that's probably the best thing that happened in my life at this, at this <laughs> yeah. point so, yeah, it was just so amazing yeah besides being married to my wife yeah but let me throw that in there but <laughs> yeah no, noel's number one beauty <laughs> well, we'll we'll count that perfect that's perfect <laughs> No, but um, I'm glad you were a part of the team, though. It was cool, like, having people from town being on our, te on our team. And to be honest, I think it was me, Matt, and just you from town, right? Um, off the top yeah. of my head. I think everybody yeah. else, Katarino from Boston. Um, we had Chris. Sure. And then we had um, Frankie. Brendan, and we had, and Frankie, uh, yeah. So yeah, I think. It was cool That's having you. Yeah, it was cool having you being a part of it. Um, just coming from, um, shout out to uh, Mr. Plick, the Master Plick, the too, uh, for raising us to become these dodgeball guys. And uh, it was cool bringing it back to Narstown. So. Yeah, it started in a church, uh, rec dodgeball. Uh, I started a little younger than you guys, I'm pretty sure, because that's how we actually met. I think I started in, uh, I think it was ninth grade for me. Uh, could be wrong, but I think it was like ninth grade. But Well, it's funny you said that because uh, it was ninth grade for us too. The first year we ever played, it was two teams and uh, it was ninth grade. So we've been there since the beginning. So we were yeah. there um, uh, 
not same t- a little bit before you, but um, we might have taken yeah. a season off. But uh, I remember growing up and seeing and playing against you a lot before we actually started teaming up. I remember that completely. I know uh, the first actual real tournament outside the wreck was actually the uh, the New Jersey uh, Mercer Madness. Jer- <laughs> yep, mm-hmm. yep, that was the first tournament that we uh, we we actually played in. I think we lost the first year. And then we actually won the second year. Um, and yep. that was the year John Kitt was on the team. Yeah. I'm pretty sure if I'm not mistaken. I know that was years ago. I feel so old. Um, Do you talk to John Kitt at all anymore? Uh, no, I don't. Um, I actually haven't. I really have not seen him in years. Uh, probably almost eight to ten years I actually haven't seen him. I know he's still in Narstown. Um and I, I know where he works and everything like that. Uh, I know everything's going well for him, so good for him. Um, but, yeah, I, I really haven't talked to him. Yeah. Um, same here. I, I've always loved John Kidd. I thought he's he's an awesome guy. Um, he's awesome, too, funny. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure he feels the same way about us, too, but it's just how life kind of takes you where you kind of disappear a little bit. But um, but enough with that. Though. It was cool to, to pick your brain. Uh, let's get into some Disney, though, for uh, – for you guys, how many times have do you think, if you had to like approximate, how many times do you think you've been to Disney? And we're talking Disney World, just because there's some people on the West Coast that listen to the podcast. So it's not Disneyland, it's Disney World in Orlando. Um, how many times, or well, I should also ask you, have you ever been to Disneyland as well? Yes. What? So, <laughs> so the, your first question, during the pandemic, we've gone four times this weekend is going to be our fifth time and then we are we do have reservations for next month no. we have plans for february if, like valentine's yeah, if, day weekend if my surgery is not scheduled for around then we are going in february so that'll be six times since our honeymoon right but also john's bachelor party was in disney so That's, he has one more under so his belt than seven me. it'll be a total of seven times within the past year dang uh and then before that, we went, what was it, every year or we skipped a year? Mm-hmm. I think it was every year since we started dating, but we did skip a year. So I will add another three times to that. So that's about, what, ten, nine, ten times just right there, um, past four years. But like I said, most of it did come from this past year. Uh, we did go to California. Uh, the Disneyland in I think it was two years ago. Yeah, it was like November two years ago. Yeah, two years ago. Um, I like Disney World better, but that's just my opinion. Um, that was I really do ask you though. Uh, yeah. um, you already answered the question, but what did you like better, Disneyland or Disney World? And I've been uh, hearing uh, that Disney World's just. I mean, there's way more to do. Is that that's uh, yeah. it's, it's world instead of land? Like you, you really can't compete. You real honestly, you can't compare. Um, Disneyland has everything original. Um, if you really do love like Walt Disney itself and really the history of Disney, um, then Disneyland really is the park. Uh, just just because it's it's literally the original. It's, it's it was his vision and everything like that. So I did love that part. Uh, there also is California Adventure, which I thought that was pretty cool. That had a couple uh, like thrill rides um there was a i forget the name of the ferris wheel that's there but it was probably the scariest ferris wheel i've ever been <laughs> in my life i don't do heights and like the ferris wheel like is so, all, it's on a zigzag so, track so <laughs> yeah. the, the like carts that are on the actual ferris wheel some of them are on tracks that can move and shift every time you go around that is so weird so me being daring i want to do this and you know john's well, scared of heights, but yeah, I was terrified too. Yeah. <laughs> but the way I coped with it, I just laughed it off <laughs> and just hope that, you know, I didn't die. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you have to do it once. Because yeah. that's like when you think Disneyland, you think of that Ferris wheel. Yeah, that's what the, that's the one with the Mickey face on it that you pretty much see. Like right by the water. Yeah. Gotcha. I was like, yeah, Disneyland was really nice. Um, I believe you can do the whole thing in one day, though. Um, we did both parks in one day. 
I think we got everything done in both parks besides uh, one ride. And I think it was like some Finding Nemo voyage thing, submarine thing. But we literally finished, we did every single ride. Um, I would say that the negative checklist for Disneyland is that for Fantasmic, there's nowhere to stand. So like, I, d I don't think I'm that short, but I had to hold my phone up on like video just to see like what was going on because they don't really have a ded dedicated space for shows like shows on the water right there and also there really isn't many places to eat or drink yeah. so whenever you do want to find something to eat there's going to be a line gotcha yeah but yeah disney world i think it's just a lot better for for a vacation um especially if you're going for a week i think disneyland is more of a if you're in California, you definitely got to do it for a day. Yeah. Thing, but that's just how I feel. Um, when was it? Four years ago, we also did Disneyland in Paris. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, yeah, yeah, we did Disneyland in Paris four years ago. Uh, my go sister ahead. got married in Ireland. Okay. And we decided to make a little trip out of it. So we got the round trip tickets from Paris. So our first full day there, we did Disneyland Paris, which we really lucked out because... The weather wasn't that great. It was it was kind of like overcast, a little drizzly. So like, we don't care about that stuff. We managed to get a lot of stuff done. Mm -hmm. um, didn't really have many lines. There were a few things that we didn't get to see solely because like timing and like, also I didn't know that like something like that was there. So underneath the castle, there's the dragon yeah, from the dragon. Is that Sleeping Beauty? Yeah. They have like the dragon underneath the castle, but you know, we missed out on being able to see that. Yeah. Um, when you were in yeah. California, did you guys, was that when the Tower of Terror was redone? It was redone to Guardians of the Galaxy. Did you guys do that? Yes, we did. Oh, yep. Like, yep. What was it like? Like, how is it? I. Tower of Terror and Guardians of the Galaxies, literally, it's, it's weird. It's the same, but it's, it's completely different. Tower of Terror is supposed to make you scared. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy is supposed to make you laugh. Okay. Um, but Drew, when we were on Tower of Terror, you laughed anyways. So I don't think you really laughed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think you right. laugh harder, really. Um, but I, I think it's a very cool thing how they actually made Guardians of the Galaxy into the from the Tower of Terror ride. So it's um, basically the same ride, it just has... It is the same ride, it's just different effects because yeah. you're really watching Guardians of the Galaxy instead of like the whole Twilight Zone theme. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, it's cool that you guys have been to Disney World, Paris, Disney, and Disneyland. I don't even know what you call Paris Disney, but I, I'm assuming Paris. I think, yeah, Disneyland Paris. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, you guys are definitely crushing it. Would you say that's on our bucket list to see all the Disney? Yeah, all the Disney, all yeah. The Disney parks. We'll try and eventually do that, but we could kind of make it a competition, so it kind of push each other. <laughs> but um, we're we're way like yeah, the underdogs right now because we've only been to Disney World. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we might have been there. We might have been to Disney World a, a couple more times more than you, but it's kind of unfair though too because we were living down there. For I mean, I had a pass for like four years of my life. We, yeah. when I was in college, I went to USF, which is in Tampa, and then Orlando's only like maybe 15 minutes, depending on traffic, to Disney. So sometimes we would just go to ride like our fast pass rides and then we would leave. Like we were there like <laughs> half days just for rides and then go back home. It was awesome. <laughs> Man. Yeah, but, um, We'll we'll go over real quick. Um, so another reason why I kind of wanted to have this podcast too is because we actually shared a trip with you guys when you went down. I believe it was right after Thanksgiving. Um, yeah, Black Friday weekend. Yeah. Yep. And uh, we went to Coronado Springs. Uh, that was the first time I was ever to a Disney resort. And pretty much Disney resorts were like what ten, maybe fifteen minutes away from the actual park. And I oh uh, yeah, it all depends. It could be anywhere from five minutes. Um, like 30. Yeah, nah, I, I would say it's probably about 20 to Magic Kingdom. Usually most of the hotels are uh, down south near 
Epcot, Hollywood Studios, and Animal Kingdom. Magic Kingdom is actually north, about uh, 20 minutes compared to everything else. Gotcha. Uh, so that's why the resorts around Magic Kingdom are, they're called the Deluxe, and they're like a lot more money. But uh, Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what, though. That place was unbelievable, though. We were super excited that you guys invited us out to that because uh, beforehand we would just drive to the uh, parks, spend the day there, and then drive home because it wasn't too far. But being able to spend some time at the resorts was, was a blast. So if anybody's listening to this, Coronado Springs, I mean, I'm biased because it was the only one I've ever been to, but that was a really cool spot to be at. Well, that's also the same place where uh, half of the NBA players uh, stayed at for the for the bubble. Yeah. Uh, I believe the Lakers, uh, pretty much all the better teams, uh, were at Coronado Springs because they – they relied on the pretty much the better team to go farther in in the playoffs, um, so that was pretty much the hub was Coronado Springs for them. Um, so they actually picked that to be the best resort for the uh, for the NBA players. That's awesome. And then a funny story you were telling me too when we were there was uh, you were saying they had to like switch out a lot of the beds because everybody's like six foot twelve. <laughs> so, was like, so it was like. Every bed had to be switched out for like a larger bed, right? Yeah, uh, that's why I saw photos online that they had to switch a lot of beds um, into. I, I don't even know what what you would even call it. It's not even kings. They're like they're, California kings. No, or extra long, long kings? extra long California king. I don't even know what they <laughs> consider it, but yeah, I I don't know how they did it, but they did it. Yeah, dude, crazy. But uh, I remember uh, just the highlights off the top of my head, and then you guys can kind of pinpoint highlights for you guys. But uh, I remember going there. My favorite day, obviously, I'm biased, though, is uh, when we did Epcot and we did Around the World together. We drank so much. Um, it was a blast, though. Um, when I go to Epcot, I, go, I strictly go to drink, and then I go for um, uh, for Soren, pretty much. But uh, um, That's yeah, that's my favorite part too. Yeah, um, but it was cool that yeah, you guys cool. almost made like an itinerary for drinking around the world, and uh, we kind of started, and then we had to go back because you guys were like, "No, you're not doing it right. We have to do this first, this first, then this, then this." And it was it was fun. <laughs> gotta, I, was like, dude, I get more cool. drinks. <laughs> Let, let's let's backtrack. We got to yeah. do all the countries in order. You can't skip a country and try to go backwards. Mm -hmm. It's just it doesn't work that way. You can't leave the country until you're finished that drink and then you move on to the next one i i loved i loved your mentality because that means more drinks for us <laughs> too so but then another highlight yeah. though too was leaping leprechaun at what's it called crown and rose is it called yeah uh rose and crown, rose and crown. yep in yeah in the uk yeah but you guys introduced us to the leaping leprechaun and that is my favorite drink at epcot now it was just so good <laughs> yeah it's a uh like an irish trash can yeah pretty much it is an irish trash can it is green pretty much it's like cherry yeah it comes with the cherry but yeah it pretty much tastes like a trash can yeah uh, i'm pretty sure there is red bull in there um yeah but yeah they probably one of the best drinks i love getting dude so good it made you it made your poos green <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Me, bro, I had them leprechaun droppings. But uh, <laughs> what, were, what were some of your highlights for, uh, from that trip for you guys? Um, So we were actually there a little longer than you guys. Uh, so your brother Matt and Danielle, they stayed with us the first night. Mm -hmm. And then pretty much... Uh, we had the dinner together. Yeah, we all went to, yeah, we all went to dinner together. So I actually like... That was probably the best time since I actually haven't seen neither of you two, uh, all four of you, I guess, since the, uh, since the wedding. But I wouldn't even consider the wedding just the fact that we were running around. Um, but even before that, we haven't really hung out a long time. So I would say when we had dinner at uh, the hotel, you know, do you remember the name of it? The Three Bridges? Yeah, I think it was called Three yeah. Bridges uh, Bar and Restaurant. Um, we were sat at like a happy hour table. Yeah, like a lounge like a couch table. With a coffee um, table. But I, I, I thought that was really, really cool since, like you said, when we go to Disney, we pretty much do the same things every time. So it was really nice to uh, be around people that we haven't seen in a long time. Um, that was probably the best for my part. Um, Drink around the world with you two was definitely different than uh, any other time. You got you two. I feel like are a lot slower than uh, 
how we usually drink. I feel like this is nice the <laughs> drunkest I think you know I would think. Like like and, and enjoy my drink, John. Like, enjoy. Oh, you got to drink around the world. <laughs> we yeah. <laughs> be fair, John. We're old now. I'm, I'm almost 32, bro. Well, so again, speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but besides that, uh, th those two are definitely uh, probably the best. Was drinking around the world and then uh, definitely dinner um, the night before. Uh, Noel, did you have anything to add to that? Um, I don't think so. Well, so when you said what my favorite was, I automatically was thinking about what drink I liked the most. And I was going to say the what, hot chocolate martini in France. Yeah, you, yeah. This oh, it's so yummy. <laughs> that yeah. had like the peppermint stuff on it, right? That you got? Yeah, it had like the whipped cream with the chocolate sauce. Yeah. yeah. With the squirrel that kept coming up to our table. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another thing I wanted to add to that. I can't believe I forgot about, but uh, so we had dinner at Coronado Springs at the Three Bridges, but then we went out to have some more drinks at um, Disney Springs, which is also, if anybody's listening, is a really cool place to go out for drinks too. But um, we went to that, uh, what was that restaurant called again? The Boat House. The Boat House. Boat House. Oh man, yeah. I love the Boat House. And then we were listening to uh, <laughs> Nate Robinson get knocked out by Jake Paul, which was embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that was a really fun night, though, too. Just in the whole from dinner to drinks, uh, that was a really fun night. And like you said, too, John, uh, just catching up with you guys, it was it was a really cool weekend. It was probably a highlight of um, being in Florida. So uh, we appreciate you guys inviting us out. Yeah, anytime. That lemon drink yeah. was really good. What was it called? It was like pink with blueberries. Uh, yeah, the, blueberry lemonade. Yeah, I think it's literally just called blueberry okay, lemonade. Yeah. Yeah. I that was such a great drink. That was probably my favorite one. I yeah, I, I know Bill House has really good drinks. Um, we ended up sitting on that back. Uh, they have a back deck right on the water, uh, so we were out in the open. So that was really nice. Uh, also, just to like move back a little bit. Uh, so since we stayed on property, uh, we ended up getting free transportation to disney springs in the park so we didn't have to drink and drive anywhere so or take an uber so i feel like that's like one of the perks of uh staying on property because like you said drew you never actually uh stayed on property so if you guys did around the world someone would have to drive yeah. drive all the way back home so i know that's probably rough for someone uh, but that. yeah <laughs> <laughs> But I feel like that that helped us a lot, being able to, you know, drink a little more. But yeah, that mm -hmm. boat house though was a uh, was amazing. I know. Also, on top of that, uh, you guys left. I think it was Sunday, and we had one extra night where you guys left Saturday. But uh, no, they were they were with us until the last day because we did Hollywood Studios. Matt and Danielle left. Oh, it was. Yeah. Well. Hmm. Yeah, Matt and Danielle stayed with us the first night. Then oh, but Matt, but Jim Matt and, and Danielle did not come out with us. When do we do the the roof dinner top? and stuff? Was the, roof, the deck rooftop? That was um, that was after that was after Epcot. We were. Oh, uh, that what it was? Yeah, you. So you yeah, guys. Out. <laughs> yeah, you guys were tired, <laughs> but uh, Coronado Springs has a rooftop uh, bar. Literally, I think it was like on the twentieth floor, and you really could see all the parks from up there. It was actually a amazing up there um there wasn't many people up there i guess because it was just so late at night but i, I really did enjoy the views up there um so if you guys ever go back you guys definitely gotta check out that rooftop uh bar is that something you have to be staying at the hotel to go do or nope. Nope. No. yeah so we could just go there for fun yeah we'll definitely check that out that's something i do regret but uh i'm glad i didn't go up because i was at that point where like, I'm a, I'm a veteran of the drinking game now where I'm like, all right, I know where my limit is. So if I would have went up there, I would have been gone for the next day. <laughs> but, um, oh, okay. So the next topic I want to get into, which is going to be, I think it's going to be really fun. Cause it's going to be kind of like a debate slash us trying to figure out what are the best three rides at each park. So let's start with a park that I don't, 
that I probably go to the least, just me being selfish. But uh, well, how about this? Let's start with Epcot because there's not many rides in there, so there's not many you can. All right, let's do that. I might not even, since you guys are, you probably are better with me than rides. So John, we'll go with you first. Then we'll do Noel, then Emily, then me. Um, so my top three. There's really there's two main rides, and then there's a bunch of little yeah. ones. Uh, of, of course, my favorite Epcot soaring, mm-hmm. number one favorite ride. Yeah. Uh, two's Test Track. Um, that's the other big one. And then third, I actually ended up going with mission space um even though it does make a lot of people sick um i i think the way that they make you feel like zero gravity how like you're traveling to they have two different sides but mars and uh uh the moon i think it's really really cool how i guess the technology that they use but i i definitely do like mission space if it really does make me sick gotcha gotcha. i like I don't remember going on that ride. I think whenever we did it, I must have been wasted. <laughs> we'll do it this weekend. I, I have like no recollection of it. Um, What's yours? For me, so I would say soaring would be my top. Number two in uh, the Norway pavilion would be the frozen ride, right? Mm-hmm. It's in Norway. Yep. And then three would be the. Um, the boat ride in Mexico because I just I think it's so cute. I think it's called Three Habaneros or something yeah, like that, maybe. With Donald and the I, other two. I forget their names. I'm sorry. Jose and uh, I don't know if it's Diego. I, I could be I wrong think with it is Diego. Diego. Is it Diego? Yeah. I know Jose's the second one, but. But once Ratatouille is finished, that's automatically going to be my top ride so nice. tbd for next month hopefully <laughs> oh it's coming out already next month i, I see That's, a lot of, yeah, yeah a lot of photos online showing that they're uh, they took down the construction wall yes. so now you can see like the sign and they have a fountain right in front so of it, the ride. yeah it, sh- it should be any any week now hopefully which we did that ride in disneyland paris and it was amazing it was absolutely amazing yeah. Well, that's another thing too just everything i feel like disney does they just do it right whether it's like out. construction or or yeah. food or like for instance the star wars when they added the star the whole star wars section in um, oh, Hollywood, yeah. like everything in there down to like their water bottles are like so detailed it's crazy so, um, <laughs> yeah that's something that's another reason why disney is just so much better than anything else i feel like but uh, Emily, what would your top three be? So my top three rides in Epcot. Number one, I have to go test track just because you know what? I like I like the thrill rides. Number two is definitely Soren, just because I mean, legendary. And then <laughs> my third one, I would probably have to say it's the Frozen ride, just because. Yes. Come on, my girl Elsa, I love her. <laughs> So, nice. That's me, but. And then for me, my top three are I'm pretty much the same as you guys. Number one, Soren. Uh, for people that don't know what Soren is, it's pretty much like a. Would you guys agree with me? Where it's like almost like a ski lift, like it takes you up, but then you're in front of this huge like half balloon blue screen that just sends yep. you through like the best. You're, it's like it yeah, feels like, like you're, you're gliding. Like it a... kind of is like if you hang glide. Yeah, all over hang glide. yeah, that's a great way to explain it. And you're going through like, yeah. the yeah. best like scenic places in the world, and it's like what maybe f- like four minutes long or something like that. They also have the smells. Yeah, yeah, yeah but they'll like throw in like certain scents. Uh, you'll feel like a breeze in certain spots. It's just a really cool laid back ride, but it's it's really it's one of those rides that that appeases to all ages, um, and it's just really awesome. I think. And then my second one would actually be probably test track. But then my third one's going against you guys a little bit. You might think I'm a nerd for this, but uh, what's the one where you go up like the conveyor belt and it kind of takes you throughout the park on that little lazy leg? You know what I'm talking about? In the ball? In the Epcot ball? Yeah. Uh, that one is called uh, Bishop Earth. What is it called? Spaceship yeah, Earth. Spaceship Earth. That I'll, one's lame. 
it's lame, but I love it because it's oh one of those. Gosh. You're just kind of taking. I'm like an old dad right here, but like <laughs> you're just like taking a breather. It just tells you about the park, and it's just super lazy, but I love it. And the and the line always seems long, but it's not really that long. So uh, that's like my breather in uh, in uh, Epcot, especially because when I'm at Epcot, yeah, that, I'm there to drink. I'm there to drink and go to Soren. That's pretty much it. Yeah, that's my nap ride. Yeah, dude. Though. It's perfect. Uh, <laughs> nap so I think we can, I think by everybody voting, I could, I think, would we all agree that Soren being voted? Yeah, I think that's as, Soren. Yeah. I think that's the number one. And then kind of two and three is like a mix of uh, each one. First more. Frozen and Test Track. Yeah, I agree. I think Frozen and Test Track has been mentioned more than anything else. So. Um, and I'll say that's probably the third one too, whichever one's not second. But I would say they're probably the top three. A hundred percent. Um, what? Which one do you want to do next, John? Um, let's do Hollywood Studios. All right, that'll be a good one. That one's easy for me. What's your <laughs> What's your top three for, uh, for Hollywood, uh, John? All right, number one, Tower of Terror. Oh yeah. Uh, number two, Rock and Roll. Oh Coaster. yeah. <laughs> Um, and then third one is the ones that you didn't do is you two had to leave, yeah. but Star Wars Right for the Resistance would be my Was favorite. Was that your first time doing it? So we did it, how many times? Was it twice so far? Mm. Or once? I think we did it once or twice, but... Uh, I did it twice. John did it on his bachelor trip, so I think he did it uh, three times. Yeah, I, I guess I did it three times, but the technology they use is like... Nothing like any other ride that I've ever seen, honestly. And it really just blows your mind. Um, I've been on it, I guess, two or three times now. And there's still stuff that, like, I haven't noticed. Every time I go on the ride, it's just new things that pop up here and there. Yeah. But I would say the technology that they use, it's not a, it's not really, like, a thrill ride. Um, but it, it's more of just, like, it makes you feel like you're really inside the yeah, movie. That's cool. And then Noel, what would you say? So my number one is Tower of Terror, obviously. <laughs> uh, but specifically, like when you're walking up the left side elevator, like the one furthest to the left, I feel like it's the most, um, the one that like jumps around a lot. Yeah, I, so, I, don't know. So I just think it's in, a lot better. So you could go left or right uh, once you get close to boarding on the ride. And uh, I, I would agree with you, Noel, that if you do go left instead of right, those two, there's two on each side. Uh, the ones on the left, I feel like it is a little bit of a longer ride. Um, and on top of that, it does like jump you up and down um, a I little like more. It, yeah, I'd say yeah. a little bit more than if you go to the other side. That's cool that, too, that they know, like program, they program each side to be a little bit different too. And that's another yeah, thing that they, makes it cool. Yeah. I looked it up and they did say it's supposed to be randomized. Um, so it might be totally randomized, but every time we went left, it was better than the right. So I don't know if that was just pure luck or or what, but I, I like the gotcha. left side better. Yeah. So then number two, I would say Rock and Roller Coaster. And number three, I'm kind of unsure what I would want to pick because... You can also add shows too. Uh, hmm, I don't know if I would add it. So I really like the um, Toy Story Mania. Is Toy that Story what it's Mania. Cool. Yeah. Yep. Um, I like that. But ever since Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railroad, Railroad yep. came out, I think I might like that more hmm. because just like the um, like the animations that they use and the ride in general. I don't know. I just that might be my third, but it might be a tie too. Nice. <laughs> so I'm gonna go number one Tower of Terror for sure. Um, I will just disagree <laughs> with you guys though. I just feel like every time I've gone on to the right side, it's what you're describing the left side as. So when we went on the right, <laughs> when we went on the right side, I was like, we're going, or I mean, on the left side with you guys, I was like, we're going on the left side. I never go on the left side, <laughs> but it was it. I, I don't know if this kind of plays into it might be randomized, but it was like how the right side usually is. So I don't know if it is, but 
So it probably yeah, is I just, randomized. Then. I've <laughs> always gone on the right side, and I just always am like, yeah, the right side's the best side, you know. But <laughs> I mean, yeah. So, and then my number two is definitely rock and roll coaster, um, just for the thrill. And then number three for me is Toy Story Mania, and one of the sole <laughs> purposes of that is because I always beat Drew. <laughs> <laughs> he beats me like everything else so that's something i can you know hold over his head for but <laughs> those are my top three um so for me uh tower of terror is number one it was number one for everybody so that's a clear cut number one uh, for people that don't yeah. know you get in it takes you up uh it's a whole like theatric well all of disney is super theatrical which i love but it just takes you up, you get dropped, you come up real quick, you get dropped again, and you do that for like maybe a good minute. But uh, within that minute, you literally come out, yeah, you literally come out yeah, of Yeah, it's like you get dropped so fast that you're just hanging on by your seatbelt pretty much. But it, it's such a great, like, like it just makes me crack up the whole time because my belly's jumping the whole time. I'm just <laughs> laughing. And I told John before that, I pretty much I was, I think I was elbowing and kicking you the whole time too. But I just can't control my body because of how far you free fall. You free fall, so it's just I love that ride, and it never gets old for me. And I kind of like that the left and the right are different types of like drops. It just makes it even more exciting for me because I don't really know. I don't pay attention to it, so I don't really know what I'm getting mm-hmm. myself into each time. So I really enjoy that. Um, clear cut number two uh, for all of us too is Rock and Roller Coaster. It's so good. It's just a traditional roller coaster, very theatrical though too. And you got that music. Yeah, it's all Aerosmith, um, but it's a really awesome roller. It's probably one of the better roller coasters in Disney. I would say that and Everest are probably the best too. Um, mm-hmm. And then for me, for the third, the only thing with Hollywood is my third is kind of up in the air between Toy Story Mania. I really like that because it's like an interactive shooter game where you try to get points yep. uh, for people that don't know. Uh, what Toy Story Mania is, but you compete against the person that's next to you first and foremost, but then there's other, there's two other people behind you in the game that you kind of compete against too, but mostly you just want to beat the person that's next to you for bragging rights, obviously. But I also like something that you guys haven't mentioned yet, and I don't even know if, uh, let me know if you've uh, gone to it, uh, John Noel, but um, I like the Indiana Jones show a lot. Yeah, I've done it. I don't think Noah's done it. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, uh, yeah. We just when we went, um, we just never had time really. But we were gonna go, of course, during honeymoon. But they shut down pretty much mostly all shows. Yeah. Um, so they haven't brought that back yet. But uh, I really do like Indiana yeah. Jones uh, the show. I really one day do want to get picked to be uh yeah. to be out there like. Uh, some people do yeah if you um, um if you guys get a chance definitely do it together because uh, i was actually pleasantly surprised with that because like i'm not a huge show guy but going to it and seeing like it's like a behind the scenes type like directing type action show it's it's really really cool and i even uh texted my brother my older brother right after it, greg uh being like dude you would really enjoy this if you actually came down and uh uh, went to Disney. It was it was very different, but really cool, like angle they took on the show. So, um, yep. But obviously, the top two yeah. rides uh, we all agreed on. Um, which uh, park do you want to do next, John? Let's do Animal. <laughs> um, my clear cut number one is uh, Avatar: Flight of Passage. Uh, that be the best ride at Disney. I'm not. I think that might be my favorite ride at Disney. Um, number two, definitely Mount Everest. Mm-hmm. Uh, top two rides. Uh, and then the third one, I would probably say the Safari, just the fact that, like, how often do you actually go on a Safari? Um, so I think that's, like, really cool, especially we've been on it multiple times, and uh, – I feel like it's it's different every single time. You see different animals every yeah. single time. So I think that's really, really cool about the safari. Um, but they're definitely my top three. How about you, Noel? Noel? Um, I think my number one would be the safari. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Um, just because I just, I really enjoy it. And it's not short either. And it I is like a all, long ride. How, how long? I want to say it's like 20 to yeah, 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Yeah. It depends what like guide you have. But I don't, I just always like hearing all the like interesting facts. And I feel like even though I might go on it more than one time, like I might learn something new the next time yeah. I go on it. Um, number two, I'd probably say Pandora. And then three. Well, which Pandora? Oh, the um, Flight of Passage. Yeah. Okay. Flight of Passage. And then for the third one, um, I'm in between Everest and Dinosaur. Mm -hmm. But one? I would probably Everest. pick Everest. Yeah. That is a great yeah, ride. Right. It just like over Everest is like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about you, Emily? Um, for me, definitely Flight of Passage. Passage. I agree with John. Like, that's probably the best ride in 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 all the parks. I feel like it's just so well done. The fact that you're sitting on this thing and you can even feel the dragon's like breaths. I love that. I thought that that was such like a great addition to like again going back to disney's they just do everything they think of everything every little thing is just really well done but so that's definitely my number one number two is safari for me again um i love that every time you go on it because you have a different guide they have their own facts that they personally look up or like to tell and it's always different. Like usually I don't hear the same fact twice. And sometimes Drew and I have gone on Safari twi twice in one day and it's been completely different. That because of facts. And number two is because usually you don't see the same animals um, every time. So yeah. I yeah, that part I of it. I completely yeah. agree. And then number three, um, Probably Everest, just because it's a roller coaster and you got to get your your thrill somewhere. <laughs> and the drink station right next to Everest yeah, that is helps. the bomb. <laughs> I don't think we ever uh, been near that drink station. I know which one you're yeah, talking you got, about. Check but... it out, man. They got yeah. some good drinks. Yeah, what was the Himalayan really? oh. something? Himalayan. Ghost or something Ghost, like that? Yeah. yeah, Himalayan Ghost. It's so good. Yeah, the mixed drinks there are real good. The beers aren't the best, but uh, the mixed drinks are real good. That's good enough. Uh, for me, uh, my number one is Flight of Passage. I agree with Emily and uh, and John where I think it's the best ride in Disney. Um, everything they put into it just makes it incredible. It's like Soren, where it's like that half blue balloon thing where like the visual effects are all around you and – it's almost like a virtual reality where you're you're sitting in it, you feel like you're part of the the ride, and um, everything that's put into it is just incredible. The only knock on it is the is the line is usually ridiculously long, just because everybody loves it. My number two is yeah. is, uh, yeah. is Everest, another probably top two, well is top two roller coasters in Disney. Um, I just love it. The line's usually not terrible. Um, but the, the, it's just such a good thrill ride. And then number three, I would say Safari, um, for all the points that you guys said too. Safari is awesome. You're in a pretty much a real life Safari inside a theme park, which is crazy, but, um, it's just an incredible ride and it's long too, like you guys said as well. So I think we can all agree that, uh, yeah, um, flight pass, flight passage is number one and then two and three is kind of a combo between like, yeah, Everest yep. and uh, Safari. I do want to shout out real quick. Um, this is, for me, such an underrated ride at Animal. The Tilt-A-Whirl, the Prima Tilt-A-Whirl, where you like spin and you go on the little track. I love that ride so much. You know, you know what's funny about it? They actually yeah, got rid of it. Yeah, they're gonna get rid of it. I, I'm really sad yeah. about it because that was such a fun <laughs> I think a lot of people are getting really? hurt on it. Uh, so 
Yeah, like this ride, it, it pretty much is the, uh, I think it's called yeah. like the mouse trap, like little booster, but you also spin at the same time. So if you spun at the wrong, pretty much at a corner, like you two, like two people were butting heads. Like it, it was very, very it dangerous it. <laughs> it <was very> <laughs> ride. <laughs> um all right so the last park is magic um what would be your top three uh john there's a lot of rides here so that's why uh this one's probably more of a discussion here um top three for magic i would say number one space mountain um number two i'm going with splash mountain as of now um, I'm not sure how I'm going to like it with they switch it over. The ride's still going to be the same. Um, so I still might like it. I just love the, the Sipity Doodah <laughs> song and uh, all the songs that they sing there. I just I just love how it's uh, themed. Uh, and then number three, um, I really couldn't really decide on like a third one, but I ended up going with Pirates of the Caribbean. Good choice. Um, yeah, I, I had to go Pirates of the Caribbean. I feel like that one's, like, really well-themed. Um, and I, I do feel like I, I am in the in the movie. Uh, so to backtrack to that, I know Walt Disney first came out with the ride um, of Pirates of the Caribbean. And then, of course, the movie came out. So after the movie became, like, a pop hit, they actually revised the ride to make it like the movie so they actually now rethemed it to the movie but originally it was just walt's uh, vision i guess of what pirates would have been how about you noah um i would say number one is space mountain um number two i would probably say splash mountain and three is the tough one yeah it really is the tough one um see magic kingdom doesn't have many thrill rides so it's hard it's, it's a bunch of kids rides but yeah. it is like you know the original park it is yeah. magic kingdom um but i feel like three is just really hard what would you say though Haunted Mansion. Haunted Mansion. You know, that's ranked number two on, I, I brought up, I actually brought up a list and they said Haunted Mansion's like the number two best ride in Disney, which I disagree with, but it, it, it's a good so choice, but not, the first not number two in all of Disney. Yeah. If you do it like the first time, like it is cool and it's very cool how it's like themed, like literally like a Haunted Mansion, but like if you do it a couple times. It really, I feel like it does get a little yeah. old. Um, no. I feel like it does. It's the break um, from the heat. It's true. It is. So that is, that is also that my other. That conveniently uh, breaks down while you're on it. So you can sit. Uh, yeah. Yes. It does all the time. And you literally just like stare at one. Mm -hmm. But it's a nice break. I will say that. It is. Yeah. I agree. Uh, how about you, Emma? So my number one, I think, is Space Mountain, um, just because it's in the dark and it's a roller coaster and it, you never know if you're going to chop your head off or not. And <laughs> so you're like crouching in the seat, but you really want to put your hands up. And I don't know. I just love that one. And then my number two is uh, Thunder Mountain, actually. I just, oh, I just love it. Um, another roller coaster. Uh, and then my number three is really hard, like you guys said. Um, I would definitely have to say Pirates of the Caribbean, though, just because that's another ride, too, where, first of all, I love Pirates of the Caribbean, the original, like, first movie anyway. Um, but it's, another, it's like a cool ride in general, like, you're just sitting on this boat, and it's like, it's another nice break from the air. It's like um, a little cooler than outside, so I think that that's nice, too. And then, um, fun fact, uh, Johnny Depp actually went to, when they redid the ride, he was actually there the opening day that they redid it, and I was there that same day and wrote it while he was like... What? playing the ride. Like, wow. he was like acting like one of the characters. 
and we didn't like my whole family we didn't know and then we we got off the ride and he's just like there and everybody's like screaming like johnny Depp. it was pretty cool <laughs> well yeah awesome I'm actually going to echo um, one, two, and three from Emily. Uh, I have the same exact picks. Space Mountain, I love it because it's another thrill uh, ride, roller coaster. It's super sketchy, though, too, like she was saying, where, like, you feel like you're going to, if you put your hands too high, you're going to get smacked. But I love that about it, though, too. It makes it interesting. Yeah, it's in pitch black, too, so you have no idea yeah. where you're going. But one time. I really do want to ride yeah, with the lights on. I agree, John. I think it'd be cool to see like how it actually looks with the <laughs> lights on. Have you guys ever seen it with the yeah. lights on? I, I've seen uh, like parts of videos um, with the lights on. It is very weird how they uh, actually have it all uh, form into uh, this roller coaster. In the little I went area. on the yeah. um, people mover, and you know how it goes through. It's not. It was actually yeah. like being worked on so it was the weirdest thing to like look at those i was oh, like that's, oh, cool. that's what it looks like that's so weird i'm gonna write it anyway though <laughs> yeah and then um thunder mountain i actually enjoy a lot too i actually don't magic kingdom i've gone to way less than the other three parks the reason it being is because you can barely drink there so uh that's my sole purpose yeah i don't even think yeah, they don't even, you can't order a drink unless you're at dinner now. And they just started that. But yeah, Magic Kingdom was literally the one park where you were not allowed to drink. And like I said, since we're all adults now, I would say that's also probably why it's our least favorite or close to least favorite yeah. right now. Um, yeah, we have a bunch of rides, but are they thrill rides? Most of them, no. I think the other one, uh, the other parks has a lot better thrill yeah. rides, but it, so there's pros and cons. There's not as many rides as Magic Kingdom. My, Magic Kingdom got a lot of rides compared to the other parks, but I, I still think the thrill rides of the other parks just makes Magic Kingdom probably our least favorite at the, yeah. at the moment. Um, and it pertains more, yeah, like uh, it's more for children, like you said, too, which I respect. Like, I think it's cool that they do that, but um, obviously it's just going to deter us a little bit more. And then my third one is yeah. uh, Pirates. I really like the setup of it, too. Very theatrical. Kind of the nice, like, chill kind of ride. Um, I really do enjoy that. Um, Jung isn't Jungle Cruise there, too? Mm -hmm. Jungle Cruise is actually kind of cool, yep. too. I was pleasantly surprised when I went on that. I think it was because we had that really funny guy that just... Yeah. Yeah, they have, like, was it, like, dry humor or uh, yeah. puns or... I think it's... They use. Yeah, and it's, yeah, it's yeah I think that ride is more of like, yeah, you, the whole experience has to like be a perfect storm for it to be really, really good. If you have like a tour guide that kind of sucks, then it like kind of ruins it a little bit. Um, the last topic I wanted to get onto before uh, I let you guys go, um, let's rank the parks uh, one through four. Let's start with the least. Let's well, let's start with the one that. Uh, well, let's start with number four, the one that least appetizing yeah. or uh, appealing, I should say. Uh, John, let's go with you first. If you had to pick out of the four parks, which one's the worst? Which one would you say? As of now, I would say uh, Magic Kingdom. Just the fact that what we just talked about, it is uh, more designed for uh, for kids or people who hasn't been there um, ever really. But I, 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 if I go, since we go on the weekends pretty much, um, that's probably the one park that we really don't go to anymore. Yeah. Um, but I, I would say that's definitely my least favorite, Noel. I would agree. Yeah. Except I do like going to see the castle and looking down Main yeah. Street. Um, Is it worth had, it, though? For If I had to pick, I wouldn't go. Yeah. Gotcha. So. How about you, Emily? Um, I would agree. I would say, like, definitely, if it's your first time, obviously, going to Disney World, then you need to go to Magic Kingdom, but if you're, if it's, like, a, you know, a seasoned veteran type thing, like, you've been a bunch of times, like, it is, unless you have kids, too, because that kind of changes things, like, none of us have kids, so we don't know, like, what that feels like to see, like, you know, your kids having the time of their life at Disney World, but, like, for us right now, I would say, too, 
Magic Kingdom is probably number four for me. I think we're all in agreement. Uh, number four for me is Magic. I've been there the least. The thing it's got going for it, though, is I do like the variety of rides it has. Um, there are some thrill rides. There are some, like, laid-back rides. And but it's a huge park. It's a big park. Um, and the visuals inside the park are really cool, too. And there's the nostalgia part of it. But for me, if I want to go to amusement parks now, personally, I like a good mix of awesome rides. And then you can also drink, too. So, um, with magic, you have to reserve like dinner to have a drink there. And I just don't like that. So, uh, that's number four for me. Uh, what's number three for you, John? Uh, number three, I am going to go with Hollywood studios. Um, the reason for that is, uh, I feel like Hollywood Studios is a half day park still, um, even after adding Star Wars, uh, there literally is only a couple rides there. Um, they do have shows, so that might, you know, extend your uh, your time in the park. But I, I feel like besides the three rides, two rides that we really named besides Tower of Terror, Rock and Roller Coaster, um, the other ones you could probably do once and be okay. So I, I just feel like as of now, Hollywood Studio really doesn't have that much that uh, – really excite, uh, excites me besides uh, those two rides. How about you, Noel? No, well. Yeah, I would agree. Because, like, if I was going to go, my first pick would be Tower of Terror. And then if it was too crowded for the rest of the day, I would leave and be happy with doing that one ride. And I don't think, like, the price that you're paying for the ticket just to get into the park is worth what you're getting out of okay. it. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I would kind of agree. To, I love Hollywood Studios, but I would definitely agree that it's it's my third choice as well. Just because you're right, Noel. You don't really get like the the money's worth, especially if it's not like a park hopper pass. I feel like that's a park where like you're like, okay, I'm gonna go to Hollywood and ride a couple rides, then I'm gonna go to Epcot and drink all night. Like it's a it's a mm -hmm. park where you yeah. have to go there, do like the big rides or the shows that you wanna do, and then it's a park where you're like, Okay, I'm done, let's go to a different park. But if you're gonna spend all day in Hollywood, it either has to be literally your first time and you wanna ride every single ride or I don't know. You're like, I don't know. I just feel like it's a park hopper. Like, it's a one where you go to that, you go to that park, and you go to, and then you go to another park that the same day. I do have to admit though, real quick, my best show though is Fantasmic at Hollywood okay. Studios. Um, I know they're not doing that right now um, due to COVID, but I would say Fantasmic at Hollywood Studios it is the best ride. But Emily, like you're saying. I feel like we've done it multiple times, and if we go when the park opens, um, we pretty much can be done all these rides by, like, I would say yeah. 3, 4 o'clock. And the Fantasmic doesn't start until 7 or 8 until it gets dark. So, like, what do you do for four hours? You're either repeating or you're leaving and coming back. So it definitely is, like I said, a, a half-day park. Um, but you definitely do got to try Fantasmic when, once it does come back. See, this is why we're all best friends, because we can all agree on it. Uh, Hollywood <laughs> Studios, for me, is number three as well, too, because um, exactly what you guys said. I, I feel like it is a half-day park. Um, you can get everything done that you want to do. Like, for me, personally, like, when I go in, I want to do Tower of Terror, and I want to do Rock and Roller Coaster. If I can fit in Toy Story Mania, I'll do that, too. But then I also do like to walk through to Toy Story, because just the whole, like, effect of that world is really cool to walk through and then the same with uh star wars too star wars i can walk through and enjoy it and not even go on a ride like i can just walk through and be like all right i'm good but then i'll also say there is a bar there and I, i'm sad that i can't remember the name but they do beer flight uh, uga is it august cantina not at um yeah, that's, uh that's... i wasn't being too descriptive uh not at uh star wars but uh in hollywood there's a bar. Uh, 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 Tap House. Tap House. That's it, yeah. I love that bar, and I love going there to have the uh, beer flights. So that was, I'm glad you guys remember yeah. that name because uh, I do love stopping there, though, too. 
But um, exactly what you guys said, though, too. Hollywood is an awesome um, place to go see, the go on the rides that you want to go on, but then, like, kind of sightsee, but then kind of bounce after it. Um, mm -hmm. So for me, that's why that's number three, though, is because it doesn't have the perfect storm for me. But, um, John, what would you have for number two? Uh, number two would be Animal Kingdom. Um, that's also another half-day park. Um, I also think that, I believe right now, uh, Animal Kingdom closes at, like, 6 p.m. So, pretty much, uh, you really do have to wake up early for that park. Um, to try to get everything done. Um, they also don't have many rides. I believe they have six rides. Uh, they do have uh, an awesome show, The Lion King. Uh, but like I said, they only do have like five rides and you can't really do anything besides the rides. It's not like you could really drink or anything like that, but it is very, very cool. I definitely would do Safari multiple times, which we have before um, in one day, but Besides that, I'm only putting it as number two, which is the fact that it is a, a half-day park for me. Yeah, I would, I would have to completely agree. Except last time we were there, we got to see Pandora at oh, night, cool. which was really nice because we, that was the first time we saw it. And we also got a couple of drinks at the Nomad Lounge, which is like right before you're walking into Pandora. Yeah. So I thought that was... That was pretty neat too because i mean you can't really drink that much there but i thought it was still enjoyable i still put it at two though even though i love stuff is that the so mixed much. drink at the nomad lounge with like the weird little balls in them you know what i'm talking about so that one is uh that one's actually the one you're talking about is actually in pandora okay. uh i'm not sure what it's called but uh, it's, it's amazing like blossom, i think it's called like blossom yeah, blossom you're right. Something. I remember it's Blossom something. Yeah, it's yeah. like Blossom something, but that's right in. You can get it alcoholic or non-alcoholic, but you always got to get yeah. it alcoholic. But it's so it is good. good. Yeah, that is probably <laughs> the best drink to be. Yeah. I would say for me, it's really like, honestly, it kind of depends on the day. But today I'm going to go um, Epcot as my number two. Um, just because I feel like with Epcot, the only, my, my sole purpose is to get drunk at Epcot and not that that's, you know, not a number one choice cause definitely it is, but there's not like, I feel like there is a little bit more like rides and stuff to do at animal kingdom. Um, however, like John said, the park and Animal Kingdom does close a little bit earlier just because of the animals. So I could definitely see how it's like a half day park, but usually when Drew and I go, we kind of like split up the rides and split up the drinks at Animal. So it makes it like a full day park for us at least. And I that's the only reason why I'm putting Epcot for number two, just because they're, like I said, the only thing we're doing is walking around the world and getting drinks. And then we usually only go on Soren. Um, I don't think Drew have we even ever been on test track together? Probably I not. No. I don't I've only been on had... it I've only been on it once, honestly. Yeah. So I just feel like for Epcot, the only purpose is for us to go there and and drink our our drinks. So that's that's yeah. me. So for me, as a lot of people know, I love to drink. Um with saying that, though, it's going to be a surprise that I'm going to have Epcot as number two for me is because the same thing that Emily was saying is I love to drink. And when I go to Epcot, I love to get drunk around the world. Yeah, I always have a great time. It's never a bad time. Um, but Disney as a whole, I like drinking, but I also like going on the rides. And there's, there's just not enough really fun rides for me in Epcot to make that number one. So that's why it's my number two. Uh, I do really enjoy soaring though, but I pretty much will either do soaring and then go and get drunk or we'll go have some drinks, do soaring and then have some more drinks. So, um, I mean, it's a perfect day. Don't get me wrong. I enjoy it. Um, but uh, if I had to choose, it, it would be my number two. So now for you, uh, John, you're going to debate me on this now since that's your number one. Why is it your number one? <laughs> 
uh, drinking around the world, you, you really can't compete yeah. with that. Uh, having a drink in every country. I think there's 11 total countries, um, including U.S. Um, but, yeah, just, just doing that. Like I said, soaring is one of the top rides there. Uh, but you pretty much do do Epcot for the drinking. They also have a ton of restaurants. There's so many restaurants there that, oh, yeah. yeah, I don't even know if we'll even get to all of them. But they have a, what's... What is probably your favorite? The one that we just recently went to in, I want to say it was October. We went to Teppanetto, which is in the Jap, uh, Japan Pavilion. It's basically hibachi. hibachi. Yeah. It was so good. Yeah. Yeah. I we got it for lunch, and I I could have gone back for dinner and like a late night snack and ate it for the rest of the night. It was yeah. so good. Yeah, and then like. They got really good restaurants like Via Napoli, um, oh, probably yeah. the best pizza I've yeah. ever had. Um, so they got, like, I mean, like, top, top, top places to eat in Epcot. Um, and I feel like that's probably, if you're really big on, like, trying different foods. or if you're, you're a foodie. Yeah, if you're really just a foodie. I, or, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Noelle? I would agree for all the same reasons. I just like being able to eat like the different foods. Oh uh, yeah, for I mean the festivals. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. like the wine, uh, the food, food and wine, wine festival this is my weekend, favorite. Yeah, this weekend's what? The one this weekend is the festival the arts. Of the arts. Oh, yeah. yeah. So. so we've never done that before. So you'll have to check out the vlog. Oh, okay. of ours is, when we is pretty it. fun, but I will say food and wines obviously number one superior to food, real quick for everyone food and wine it's not all wine uh there is a bunch of craft beer from around the world i think they have usually around 20 booths i could be wrong but like you can get flights at every single booth of uh beers uh from anywhere but it is all craft beers and they do have wine as well they also of course. have different kinds of cocktails uh, too um shout out to the fro yep. it's <laughs> my favorite drink at epcot and it's only during food and wine um, but. yeah but every yeah every couple of months they switch the season and uh it, it really is different different stands that does different food and different drinks so i feel like every time we go it, it really is different and i also love the uh flower and garden mm -hmm. festival because i love looking at the statues that they make out of like the shrubs basically yeah. i i think they're so cool and very talented whoever does it so it's, it's nice because every time you go you can see something yeah. different because it like really tries to immerse mm -hmm. you in like, the festivals and even the different cultures with the countries mm -hmm. so yeah that would definitely yeah. my number one. How about you, Emily? With animal, obviously. For animal being my number one, um, I kind of mentioned it earlier, but I just like that it's a good mix of having drinks, like especially on a hot day, and then going on a roller coaster, and then especially when we, uh, how the fast passes and stuff work for Disney. Uh, it's a little complicated to go into on a whole podcast, um, but basically. Um, there's usually a lot of time in between your couple of fast passes. So I feel like that's like a perfect time. Like you do your fast pass, you get a drink. You do your fast pass, you get another drink. You, you do your next fast pass and you get another drink. And it's just like a perfect storm, I feel like. Um, Animal Kingdom also has like a lot of shows that I like to uh, The Lion King that they're not doing right now. Um, and then the Bugs Life show, I feel like that's just uh, you want to sit down and you just want to like be in air conditioning. And I don't really like the show, but it's good to just sit there. <laughs> I like that one. I just don't like the the very end with the the seat thing. Yeah, it freaks me out a little. Don't, don't give it away. Like. Don't give it away. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's what I'm saying. You get a little, you get a little probed at the end. It, it <laughs> Like check your colon a little bit. <laughs> um, for me too, before I get into uh, animal for me, um, uh, I love the points that uh, John and Noel kind of brought up with uh, Epcot. It's almost like a 1A, 1B for me where those two are like, every time I go to those parks, I know I'm going to have a good time. Like yeah. I never have a bad time. 
at either one. It just is preference on the day, I guess. It really comes down to it. But um, like if I really want to drink, I'm going to Epcot and I'm going to have a ball. But if I want to kind of have like a good mix of like going throw rides, have some downtime to go to like one of my spots in Animal. Animal's more of like you got to find your spot to like like little hidden gems. Like there's a couple of kiosks that I like going to where they'll have a certain beer that I'll really enjoy, enjoy an Animal. I think that's why it's almost preference for me. That's why I like it a little bit more for all the reasons uh, Emily said. Was it has the perfect mix of mm -hmm. drinks and rides for Animal. I think that's why it's number one for me. But uh, Epcot's right there though too. Um, like the food and wine fest is so good. The gar I think it's called the Garden Fest. I really enjoyed though too because they have a lot of like fruity craft beers uh, during that time, which I enjoy. Um, yep. And then it's always just a ball though too. So you really can't go wrong. Um, I'm glad we did this podcast. I think it was. Awesome catching up with you guys. Um, and talking Disney is, is one of my favorite things to do now, currently, because uh, it's something I never thought I'd be that into, but that kind of introduced <laughs> me with Food and Wine Fest, and I fell in love with it. Yeah, it's definitely different once you're an adult. Uh, it, it, it's, it's a very different experience. Uh, so if you are an adult, you definitely at least got to try uh, adult Disney. 100%. It's people say it's so expensive. It's so expensive, and yes, it is expensive. But I feel like you get your money's worth when you go down. If you have enough money for anybody that's listening to this, that old, that's kind of like on the edge of going to Disney, definitely do it once in your life because uh, it's definitely a great experience. But before I let you guys go, I kind of want you guys to do like a sh shout out for your uh, vlog. You guys were doing it while we were there with you. Um, I think it'd be cool to kind of get you guys more. Uh, supporters and stuff like that too or just kind of network or whatever but um you guys are doing something kind of special so i'll give you some time to talk about that yeah thanks Drew. so uh we just started uh since we just got the annual pass this year we just started doing mostly disney vlogs um we will be hopefully traveling outside mm -hmm. of disney uh probably after COVID. Uh, so as of now, we've just been going to Disney since we have the annual pass, but it will be a traveling vlog. Uh, so the the YouTube channel is called The Traveling Iorios. It is I-O-R-I-O. -I and yeah, so we just started, how long ago? It was, was our honeymoon the first time? Or? Yeah, our honeymoon was the first time we started it. And it's been interesting because we definitely, are starting to realize what we want to change in like the next video we make and like getting more comfortable talking in front of the camera yeah because you know it it's not something you normally would do um, yeah it's my first couple of videos i had a hard time talking from the camera it's just it's very different very weird looking at yourself uh talking but uh i feel like as i've gone through a couple couple now uh i'm definitely getting better and better and uh yeah, like you were saying, Noel, uh, it is, we know what we now want to talk about and what to actually take out for our vlogs. Yeah. And we also have a Instagram page, which I try to post all the good stuff on there. Once, so. Yeah, when we are traveling, that's where all the photos will yeah, go. Yeah, like I'll, I'll post Instagram stories and... Pretty um, much all the good drinks <laughs> and food that we have. Yeah. Do you guys have the uh, Facebook page the at all? Okay. We do not. No, we just got the Instagram. What's the Instagram name? The Traveling IOS. It is the Traveling IOS. Okay. Because okay. uh, I'm kind of a loser, so I'm not on Instagram. But uh, uh, Emily runs my Drew and Crew <laughs> podcast Instagram page because I don't know anything about Instagram. <laughs> so we'll give you a like on that. And um, also, uh, I just like promoting my friend's stuff, though, too. And hopefully in return, they'll, they'll – I'm not saying you guys have to, but I'm – but, like – I'll have maybe other friends be like, oh, check out the Drew and Crew podcast if you like so-and-so. You know what I mean? If they don't like dodgeball or whatever, they wouldn't want to like it anyway. But um, it's cool to kind of, like, network between friends, and um, I'm glad you guys are doing it, and I'll definitely uh, check out your stuff a little bit more too because um, I'm a huge Disney guy, obviously, and uh, it's just good checking up on you guys. Thanks, Drew. Thank yeah. you. And you are in some of the videos. Yeah, because so, we yeah. did yeah. vlog and they're posted <laughs> from our last trip. 
Yeah, so you two will be in there. Um, I believe Matt and Danielle are in one of them. Um, but yeah, so you guys will be special appearance in uh, some of these videos. But it really was a nice time catching back up, uh, catching up with you two. Um, I feel like this was a great, you know, conversation that we had. Uh, you know us, we also do love Disney, so we can talk about Disney yeah. all night. But yeah, I really enjoyed it, and uh, thanks for uh, having yeah. us on the show. Yeah, I appreciate too. it, guys. Um, it nice let's definitely travel more, too, because uh, I was serious when we were talking about that, and then we can come on and do some more travel podcasts, too, just talking about our experience and stuff, and maybe it'll help people down the line if they're trying to go to the same place we go to. So love you guys. Talk to you soon. Yeah. Sounds right. good. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Guys. See you. Bye-bye. Peace. See ya. <laughs>